this man uh, controls over $5 billion that have gone into this area over the past 20 years. Uh, here's Forest City Enterprises. Now, this one, it's a publicly held company. They do that so they can get extra stuff flowing in. But I, you can see their, uh, their section of uh, uh, Central Station that they develop there up on the upper left. But I put up these four other pictures of other things that they're doing. Uh, around the country so that we can get context for the sort of things we're going to be able to do on the site. Not in scale of course, but you can see there's quite a difference when it comes to aesthetic quality, when it comes to the you know, tecton tectonics of the buildings. You can see B2 Brooklyn, that's all the largest modular tower. And uh, uh, it'll be the largest modular tower in the United States. And that's right behind me, or right, it's abutting the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, which is a stadium. So that's quite a lot like what's going on in uh, uh, the South Loop right now when you have the new DePaul Stadium coming up. You can see 8 Spruce Street over there, designed by Frank Gary. I'm sure you're all very aware of that. You can see Tobacco Road just below it. Now that's not the prettiest, but that does show a good precedent for adaptive reuse. There's a lot of old warehouses in this neighborhood, and somebody has to do something else with them, don't they? So they, whether it's something modern and new and pushing the end limits of design or construction or it's uh, you know being historically sensitive. These clients have deep pockets and they are willing to do the right thing for a specific site context. And when you have three different sites that are so incredibly different, you're going to be looking at three different uh, solutions to your problems. Uh, and just so that you can get a sense of the sheer volume of what billions of dollars look like, so Forest City, they put, I think, like three or four billion of their, uh, of their massive uh, assets into Chicago. But you can see that their re revenue for the last quarter of all of their stuff, this is Chicago, that little sliver there, and that's everything else. So this is just a small part of what they've been doing. Uh, quite a large... Uh, organization making all of this happen in the South Loop. It's not you know, two guys in a hammer renovating houses. It's a very different thing from uh, this old house for sure. Um, and these guys are the enterprise companies. Uh, they're one of the third group that's in helping them. They've been uh, building a lot of the row homes. And I particularly like this slide because it kind of looks like John Journey and Caleb in 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, here's me here. This is what they're building on the south end over on Cermak. Pretty sleek, pretty sexy, don't you think? I like that. It's what $33 million of TIF funds look like. All right, so let's talk about the zoning for the sites. All right, site A, this one is B12, which means uh, retail on the first floor, bar of 2.2. So we're getting about two or three units in here of residential with two to three bedrooms, depending on how you space it. Uh, the setback's are pretty standard with what you guys are getting in the rest of your projects. You know, 30 feet back, you get 60% of your window space for the retail on the front. Uh, and this, of course, is the smallest of the buildings that uh, we're going to be designing our studio, and you can see it's in the very residential, very quiet area. Here's the Glesner house here, very historic, beautiful building by Henry Austin Richardson. And this over here is a giant park with the Clark House in it, also a cool museum for you guys to go. This nice little park over here, dark park over here, and this is just an empty parking lot. These are beautiful row homes uh, that had a great historic character to the neighborhood, even though a lot of them are new. Uh, and then site B. Here's the one in that it's tucked between two nice modern buildings, including one tower. Uh, doesn't have much facade space, but it does. It's, I think, the biggest of the... No, it's the second biggest of the buildings uh, that we'll be doing in the studio. Uh, it, it has a much more urban, a much more uh, intense character to what we can build here because it's in between these two uh, large buildings on a very busy street. Uh, and it doesn't really have much facade presence. You know, it's going to be completely dwarfed by what's next to it. So whoever gets this is going to have a good time trying to really get some attention to it. So uh, let's talk about the last one, Sightsee, that vapid, desolate corner. Uh, open book, it's the biggest one of the, uh, with a, actually the last one's the biggest. So it's about the same size as the one by the Lesnar House. Uh, 
uh, same condition, same zoning. Uh, it's sort of a corner lot. We don't really know if there's a, the tower next to it's going to be blocking the corner of use yet. So that's uh, a little bit extra research for whoever gets this problem. Hope they enjoy it. And to conclude, being good in business is the most fascinating kind of art. And good business is the best art. And you are all a great commercial guy. And that, that's sort of the vibe of the South Loop. It's very commercial, but it's it's very Chicago. It's very hardworking, and it's growing just like the rest of the city is, uh, with a lot of tip ones going to poor people. Uh, no, no. All right. Questions? Okay, I'm done.